Chapter 2 And Brad Richard retreated into his mask of stoicism as Tess went in search of another bottle of wine. He forced his expression into compliance, eyebrows neutral, a slight upturn of his lips as to not convey any sense of disappointment or negativity, eyes not too alert, fuck, nope, that's not going to work. Richard turned to the living room so Tess wouldn't see him struggling to cope with this news about her expected proposal. The two-bedroom apartment wasn't large, but it was cozy. They had lived there since Richard graduated, and it was an improvement over the studio apartment they shared during their college days. The separate rooms alone were a huge upgrade over the paneled, collapsible room dividers they had adopted out of budgetary necessity. One of those room dividers had made it to the current apartment, a vestige of their formative years. It was pressed against the wall in the living room, next to a thrift store couch, and had photos marking Richard and Tess's journey through the years. There was Richard's college graduation photo, where Tess was leaning in and kissing him on the cheek. It was his most cherished photo, physical, documented evidence of a kiss from Tess and he got a thrill to display it in their living room for any visitor to see. Of course, the photo took on a different feeling, now that he knew this stupid fling with stupid Brad Johnson was shaping up to be more than a stupid fling. Double fuck. Richard moved past the graduation photo to a picture of a college-aged Tess, pure wedding, at a dance recital. Why hadn't he made a move back then? He knew he loved her the moment they met in college, yet he convinced himself that friendship was more important. And, critically, a strong friendship would eventually lead to intimacy. After all, you don't move in with the beautiful girl right after you meet unless you're fast friends and you both need a roommate. Life Hacks 101 Richard loved the photo of Tess dancing because it was as pure a representation of his friend as he could imagine. Not only was she stunningly beautiful, that much was a given considering any photo of Tess, but the picture captured what she was destined to do, dance. If he could bend space and time and somehow make it so Tess had finished her performing arts and dance degree, followed her passion, and pursued a career in choreography, Richard knew he would do it in a heartbeat, no matter the cost to the fabric of reality. And then there was the photo of Richard and Tess moving into their current apartment. They were in the empty living room, the kitchen in the background, and each had raised a hand to form a heart for the camera. That was a good day. The studio apartment had been in Richard's name, but the new one had both of their names on the lease. Richard Gebler and Tess Taylor, two names legally joined together on an official document. As Tess rooted around for some mini bottles that might have escaped the scourge of prior bitch sessions, Richard's gaze fell to the last photo pinned to the decorative room divider. It was the most recent of the photos, taken just last year, and it was a booth at a dimly lit restaurant. An overhead bulb cast a cone of light onto a glossy wooden table. Tess was leaning over the table and flashing an open mouth grin at the camera alongside a two-finger peace sign. 
sitting next to her, mugging for the camera with a clenched fist in the air, was Brad fucking Johnson, with his perfect fucking square jaw and his perfect fucking coiffed hair and all those perfect fucking muscles. Across from the two lovebirds, the de facto third wheel, Richard smiled awkwardly. Every time he looked at the picture, he just felt small. And the photo was inescapable, relentlessly mocking him from his own living room. But how could he say anything about it? This was Tess's space too, and Brad fucking Johnson was her boyfriend. He was the boyfriend she was convinced she would marry because she never finished that performing arts degree and never pursued a career in choreography, and now she worked as a glorified prostitute getting groped and felt up at that shit show Hooters knockoff, Nips and Sips, and worst of all, the deadbolt on the front door clanked and the sound pulled Richard out of an all-too-familiar obsessive cycle of negative thoughts. The door flung open, and Richard's simmering anger clarified instantly. Speak of the motherfucking devil. Holy fuck nuts buttercups! It is getting wild out there! Brad slammed the door behind him, gritting that shit-eating, perfect fucking pearly white grin all the way to the kitchen. He carried a big brown bag of takeout that he immediately dropped on the counter along with his car keys. Tess looked up from a drawer she was sifting through for rogue booze, and Brad grabbed her by the waist, pulling her close. Richard looked away when he started grinding into her. Babes, seriously, people are coming in from all over for the rally, and it's fucking awesome, Brad said, spinning Tess around the kitchen and groping her as lasciviously as any nips and sips dinner guest. Richard coughed and stood up from the counter, stepping further into the living room and away from the invasive presence that was Brad fucking Johnson. He didn't have to see the grin on Tessa's face as Brad manhandled her. He could hear it in her giggles, playfully encouraging the perfectly brainless, perfect male specimen to fawn all over her perfect body. I talked to a group of dudes who came all the way from Alaska, Brad said. Babes, Alaska! They drove the whole fucking way just so they could bring their guns. Tess scowled, but her eyes said, Fuck me, please, because that's what she thought he wanted to see. Let me guess, they gave you a whole show and tell, waving their big old guns around from the back of their big old pickup truck? She pulled open the takeout bags. Is that why you're late with my food? Richard thumbed the television remote, but still saw when Brad grabbed Tess by her hips. Because Richard always saw. It was a goddamn fucking artillery, babes! Richard couldn't help but wince every time he said that. Babes. Go ahead and advertise how dumb you really are. Brad fucking Johnson not even able to remember her name. And it was a Tahoe, not a pickup. Richard rolled his eyes, like there was a fucking difference. One giant, useless, gas-guzzling cock compensator, or another. But these motherfuckers, Brad continued, clearly impressed and in awe of such a public display of testosterone. They had ARs, Mossbergs, S&Ws, Colts, Caltechs, Rugers. Oh, you're just saying random words now, sweetie, Tess cooed, placing a hand on his cheek. Yeah, words that got me fucking hard as a goddamn rock. 
Brad once again started thrusting his groin into his girlfriend. Richard coughed again, weakly, trying to remind them that he was standing right there. Brad turned to Richard. That stupid grin and those stupid teeth. His arm was around Tess's waist, pulling her close. Oh man, when they lifted open the back of the Tahoe, you would have fucking shit yourself, dick cheese. Literally rows of articulated shells popped out full of handguns. Richard met Tess's gaze. His strained, stoic mask was near breaking. A knowing expression flitted across the perfect contours of her face, and Richard understood it completely. He gets horny for guns, which is the stupidest thing ever, but what are you going to do? He's going to fuck me, I'm going to love it, and you're just going to be a sad loser jerking off alone in your closet for the rest of your life. Ha ha ha. When Tess turned a loving, horny gaze to her perfect fucking boyfriend, Richard let out a silent, helpless sigh. He knew he was reading into things, but he couldn't help it. It felt like Tess had the gravitational pull of a black hole, and he was trapped in her accretion disk, doomed to lose himself in her abyss. One dude even had a motherfucking bazooka. You should have seen it, babes, Brad said. He had it right in the back seat, and yeah, we swung that shit around like fucking badasses. Brad winked at Richard, and Richard felt his stomach go sour. How you doing, dickle me Elmo? You keeping my lady entertained while I'm out there being a fucking man and providing? He grabbed the bags of takeout with one hand, scooping Tess close with the other. Richard had to ask him about the manager position in R&D. He had to. Hey, uh, Brad. Come on, babes, Brad said to Tess, pulling her to the bedroom. Let's eat and fuck, or fuck and eat. He threw another lewd wink over his shoulder at Richard. Either way, there'll be fucking, am I right? Back to Tess with a laugh. <laughs> I can tell you about all the shit I blew up at work today. A sharp pain shot through Richard's jaw. He'd been grinding his molars too hard. I'm testing this exoskeleton Iron Man armor shit, and these idiots didn't think to put any weapon systems on it. Because it's an exoskeleton designed to give paraplegics mobility. It's not supposed to have weapons, you fucking moron. Richard was plenty familiar with the project. His boss was the one who oversaw it. Of course, he knew more about the exoskeleton project than the meathead who tested it. So I tell him, look, fellas, if you're going to rip off Iron Man, fucking do it, dudes. Brad said, leading Tess down the short hall to her bedroom. Give me some fucking shoulder-mounted rocket launchers or something. So they did. It was next level epic. Tess seemed pleased with this enthralling tale of turning everything into weapons of mass destruction. See? If you keep coming up with ideas like that, your promotion will be in the bag. They paused in front of her door, and he looked her in the eye. Babes, I am so lucky to have someone like you believing in someone like me. He kissed her. Deeply, aggressively, lewdly, and all for Richard's benefit, he could only assume. What a fucking douche nozzle. When the kiss finally broke, Brad eyeballed Richard and wagged his tongue. More fuel for the spank bank, am I right? Brad adopted an Asian accent that was as bad as it was offensive. 
Mr. Deek so small? The mask cracked, and Richard's nostrils flared. Not that he would ever do anything about it. Brad slapped Tessa's ass, making her yelp playfully as she bounced into her bedroom. Brad fucking Johnson humping her backside as she went, slamming the door shut behind them. God damn triple fuck. Richard dragged his hands down his face, ripping away the invisible mask and letting out a long, shuddering sigh of absolute frustration. Brad was as much of an asshole as Tess was complete perfection, and like the epitome of a third wheel, as captured so fucking perfectly in that restaurant photo pinned to the room divider, Richard was nothing more than a pathetic fucking loser. Fuck. Fuck. Fuckity fuck. Fuck.